Life is guided by laws. Laws. God gave us life and gave us laws to keep the life. The laws started in Genesis chapter 1. After he created everything, he put man in the garden. He said, Adam, you are free to eat anything, touch anything. But you see all these trees that are hanging like fans. You and your wife, don't touch it. Laws have started. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And to be lawless is to be causeful. When you are lawless, your causes have started. The serpent came. Satan came in the form of a serpent. Did God say, you should not touch this thing? I want to tell you the truth. There's something is hiding from you. He knows that the moment you touch it, you will be like him. You'll be wise like him. Unfortunately, man did not understand. Let us make man in our image. After our likeness. There was nothing to hide. God has already given you everything. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. We are packaged after the order of God. No wonder Jesus said, I have said, ye are God. So there is nothing to be like. Eat it, you will be like him. So immediately the wife tasted it. He said, oh, through, through, there's something God is hiding. He now went and gave it to the husband. The course of the law have started. Eve was the offender, but Adam has to be at the cause. The cause landed. Your wife can bring trouble for you. She's the one that offended, but the cause will come upon you. It's even practicable now in the natural. True or false? So your wife can, cannot just uh, bring trouble. Say, no, now she do I'm make sure. Now lie. You go carry her. After God placed the cause on Adam, what is asked for thee? You will give birth in pains. The course have started. But in Romans chapter 8, from verse 1, Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after what? Verse 2 now. For the laws of the spirit of life had made me free from the law of sin and what? Death. So there is an escape route. When you go outside the law zone, you enter the lawless zone and you become costful. There are too many causes of the law which we will not be able to go through all of them. But we are going to look at the implication of the causes and how people are walking into them on a daily basis. Even somebody walked into it as he came into church. So what are causes? We need to know what they do, what they are. We're not going to take all of them because there are very many. We may take just five and the remaining one in the other services. A cause is an appeal.
to an evil power to deal with a person. Afflict the person to harm the person. It's an appeal. Just like Balaam appealed to Balak. Come cause me Israel and Jacob. He said, before you, I should go and do that, let me go and hear from God first. That's a wise man. A foolish man will say, oh yeah, tell me, tell me what you are going to do. Tell me what you are going to do. It's an appeal. Somebody can appeal to you now, go and fight him. You come under the cause that the person is also going to carry. It's an appeal. Somebody can come to you now and appeal to you to fight a brother or fight a sister. You have carried a cause. You have carried a cause. Why? Because the person didn't send you to go and do good. It's to go and hurt. To go and hurt. To go and undo. To go and cause pain. To go and cause sorrow. What is a cause? A cause is an expressed wish to cause adversity, misfortune by an evil power. A cause is an expressed wish to cause adversity, misfortune, pain, sorrow by an evil power. We are going to be dealing with that in third service. All the sponsors of wickedness against families. <laughs> Something will happen today. Amen. Number three, a cause to be caused is to be sentenced to demotion and inferiority. To be caused is to be sentenced to demotion and inferiority. Sent to the lowest position to be downgraded in life. Anytime you see yourself in the dream wearing school uniform, somebody have cost you. Somebody have shot you an arrow of uh, demotion. But today, whoever fired you an arrow of demotion, the arrow will go back. I said the arrow will go back. Amen. You that left school 12 years, 15 years ago, you are not seeing yourself in primary school wearing uniform. <laughs> Error. To be caused is to have continual sorrow, frequent pain, sadness, Depression. That's why if you are in church, you are not excited. You are under a curse. So. Yes, so. Scripture says, I was glad when they say, come, let us go to the house of God. You came to church and you are, you are boning. The person is under a curse. From where, where? But today I will lose you. Amen. That thing that they use in time, you, I must lose you by fire. <laughs> you know, ignorantly, some people don't even know that they are under a course. They just uh, you think it's a uh, frowning face is achievement. You don't carry demonic spirit. To be caused is to be is to have continually everything work against you at all times. Why? Things are working against you every time. Not sometimes. It's a sign that something is wrong. To be caused also is to sweat struggle and line up for suffering.
That slogan, man must struggle, is a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So it may not come out from your mouth again. There's a place for hard work in scripture. To be caused is to be continually frustrated, disappointed, unhappy. What you get back is the opposite of what you deserve. It's a sign that something is wrong somewhere. To be caused also is to be never established. So a cost man can never be established. He's continually on the run, a beggar, living the life of a vagabond and a worthless person. We're going to see the reason for never being established. In Psalm 140, we are going to still talk, look at it again. Psalm 140, verse 11, it says, Let not an evil speaker be established. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. When you stay, you begin to talk evil about people. People you don't know. People, people that don't have anything to do with you. They talk, 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 talk. In summary, the cause of the law is willful disobedience. Anyone that comes under the cause of the law entered into it by willful. That is, his consent was given. He willfully entered into it by disobedience. It's already written in the book of the law. Thou shalt not. I call it thou shalt not causes. Willful disobedience. Your will is in place before it came upon you. It didn't just come upon you because an arrow was fired. You used your hand to buy it. And I've discovered this is even more terrible than ancestral causes. Because we have so many people in church committed. If it's activity, there are some of them are even in three units. They never miss any service. But because of ignorance of, and you know they say ignorance of the law is not an excuse. It's not an excuse. So because also is to be made a servant of servants, unable to rise, bound to unhappiness and desolation. That was one of the causes that came upon the son of uh, one of the son of Jacob. He said, "A servant of servants shall thou be." No, um, no, I place a cause upon one of the. So he said, A servant of servants shall that what be. When a, the cause of the law is working upon an individual, dreams never get fulfilled. He can never be the head. He can never be celebrated. He can never amount to anything glorious. He will never be able to prevail over circumstances. Now what are the 
various causes of the law. I'll just mention only 15 because there are too many. Cannot take all of them. If you want to read more, you go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and you take it from verse 13 down, you'll be seeing it. Let's just take Deuteronomy chapter 13 so that we see Deuteronomy 28 from verse 13. We won't read all, we'll just read all three. And the Lord shall make thee head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, which I commanded this day to observe and to do them. Go to verse 14 now. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the word which I commanded this day to, to the right or to, or to the left hand to go after other gods to serve them. Now look at verse 15. But it shall come to pass. What is the meaning of it shall come to pass? If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all this, all his commandments and his statue which I command thee this day, that all these causes shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now look at verse 16. We will take three. Cause shall thou be in the city, and cause shall thou be in the field. Cause shall be thy basket and thy store. Cause shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of the land, the increase of thy can and the flocks of thy sheep. Cause shall that be when thou comest in, and cause shall that be when thou goest out. Stop. Who was placing these causes? If thou shalt not hearken, these are the things that we follow you. So you determine what follows you. If thou shalt not hearken. Let's take a look at this. The first one I wrote here is the cause of idol worshippers. What does it mean to worship idol? When something takes the place of God in your heart, you are now worshipping that thing. You are now an idol worshipper. Deuteronomy 27 and verse 15. Cause be the man that maketh any grieving or mortal image an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hand of the craftsman and put it in a secret place and all the people shall answer and say Amen. They took a note. Do you know the cheapest thing that can be an idol in your life? Money. When money Becomes your thoughts morning, afternoon, night. No time for prayer. No time for the word. No time for anything. You already, you already have an idol. And that's why when the money is not there, you are mourning. You are sorrowing. There are some people, the moment they don't have money, their countenance will change. They can slap somebody's self. There are some other, if their wife make mistake, ask them money when there is no money. Your hair correct. <laughs> Say, uh, when is the service? Which service? Which service? Oh yeah, you should be going, be going, be going. Go and pray, go and pray. He's angry, there is no money. You will mourn. Anything that takes the place of God in your life is an idol. If a relationship takes the place of God in your heart, that person is an idol. The relationship may not work self. If you are that precious to God, it will just do, it will just make sure that the thing doesn't work. So be careful not to carry a curse. 
Number two is the cause of those who dishonor their father and their mother. Scripture says, honor thy father and thy mother so that it shall be well with you. So if you dishonor them, it shall not be well with you. I read the story of a young girl who, who felt that she is enlightened. She, the place where they are bringing the money to train her, she was now abusing the mother. They asked her to just uh, get to the shop and help them to do something. Me, go shop, go do it. The mother now opened her mouth and said, you go sell beans. The mother, they are selling beans. So she felt too enlightened, too algebraic. You see this pastor standing here? I help my mother to sell pure water. That and they sell but, uh, wa uh, water in uh, bottle, bottle. I sell mina. I carry minara for her though. You see me, me, me standing here now. Enter market. Nobody say, hey, get one shop. Which shop? But some people, they are so enlightened. Ah, my inmates be seeing me. You know, they... So the mother told you go sell beans. So when she graduated from ICT, you know where she ended up? Beans. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your father is your father. Your mother is your mother. If they say lie down, lie down. But some people, if you talk one, they talk ten. Who are you to talk to me? Just hold your mouth here. You will soon enter. He that cursed his father and his mother, his lamp, shall be put off in obscure darkness. You curse your father, you curse your mother, you curse your spiritual parents, your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, you are heading for disaster. Useless father. Some people have grace to curse their pastor. I hear you. Because what is waiting for you? That's why many of them in church can never till Jesus come amount to nothing. Because arrogance is bringing them onto a course. Who is pastor? I know him now. I know him. Didn't Miriam know Moses? Do you know that Miriam was the one that and we weed Moses? Changing pampas. Oh, go and read the Bible. But because she felt she knew Moses, began to blab against him. And God roared, Who are you to speak against my servant? To other prophets, I talk to them in dreams and vision. But to him, I speak to him face to face. He said, for this you have done. They won't buy caskets for you. The earth will open up and swallow you. Hear me and hear me where? If God goes by your service, you should have been over blessed. But your mouth, they kill you. Your mouth. You see this mouth? If this man does not destroy you, nothing can destroy you. Many people are, are in a course in church because of their mouth. Where's, what's the name of that young man that has been coming to trouble you? His name is Joseph. He came that I should pray for him. I looked at him, the Holy Ghost said, don't pray for him. 
I said, why? I said, the Holy Ghost told me, let him call all the pastors he has heard in this place. If they don't pray for him, don't touch him. I went back again. I said, why? He has wounded them severally. So he ran to Dunamis. Hear me, the cure is not in Dunamis. The cure is in the hand of God. No prophet can bail you when God has cursed you. No prophet. Now, scripture says, He that confesseth his sin shall be what? Forgiven. He that covereth his sin shall not do what? Prosper. Now, instead of going to say, I'm sorry, the new pattern is that they will just package offering and put in an envelope for the prophet. Please, I beg you, you are still dying. Your money will go as offering, not as a peacemaker. You don't, you don't cost somebody and go and be packaging offering and be putting inside offering box. Yeah, yeah, offering. Somebody came one day and brought a suit for me. Here, yeah, who brought the suit? They couldn't tell me. I said, take it back. I'm not looking for what to collect. I'm also saving my head. Let's go to the, sec the third one. The third Abby. The cause of the Lord, third cause of the Lord, those who cheat and deceive. You can cheat me and run away, but something is following you. Don't cheat anybody. Don't take what does not belong to you. Don't deceive anybody. You can be deceived into error. You can be deceived into disaster. You can deceive somebody to take a wrong action. But you have brought the person under a curse. Because you too, you are inside the curse. You can see that in Malachi chapter 1 and verse 14. Those who cheat and those who deceives. And I've discovered that those who cheat and those who deceives, they protect what the, the deception and the cheating with a lie. They protect it with a You need a lie to cover a lie. And you need another lie to cover that lie. And you need another lie to cover that another lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So the chain is endless. What are you doing to make sure that you are, you are never seen or you are never caught? And the cheapest way is to be sincere. This is what I did, though. Please forgive me. Number four is the cause of lying and swearing. You know, some people can lie, I swear. I swear. You are lying and you are swearing. You are lying against somebody and you are still swearing. Do you know the earth can bear witness against you? This earth that you are swearing with. You are lying and you are still swearing. Please, you, when you go, you take time to read Deuteronomy 17. All of these are found in Deuteronomy 27. All of them are found under that. Say the truth, nothing will happen. Tell your neighbor, say the truth. If you made mistakes, say the truth. If you walked into error, say the truth.
The more you protect a lie, what if it is discovered? And people have believed you all these years. The, your conf the confidence they had in you will just die. Two of us. Number six is the cause of bearing false witness. False witness, false preachers. Don't bear false witness against someone. Agree with me or stand by me or stand by me so that we will nail him, so that we will don't. If you bear false witness against someone today and they judge the person, don't worry. Your own they come. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth. Don't worry. You have bear false witness, no problem. And the ultimate end of bearing false witness is to blackmail. Blackmail the person. So that the person will be hated. So that the person will be rejected. Keep on keeping on. But I want to assure you, what goes around comes around. You will get your share. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Galatians 6 verse 7 must catch you. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth. He said, that shall he reap also. So when you bear false witness, oh, I remember what um, one of my friends told me. They wanted to nail a pastor. So, they were almost at the verge of concluding his matter. He just walked into bishop's office. Sir, don't take that action. It's a lie. You mean it's a lie? Yes, sir. Call this person now. He will tell you the truth. And I know our leaders, they like people that tell them the true picture of matters. A senior pastor, he will have been sacked. Just because of a false witness. Sir, don't take that action. Because of that thing he did. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Papa loves him. Bishop Abiy loves him. No matter what you try to do now, they still remember that thing. Now they did another one to nail another person. They call him. I heard that this person says so and so. Please, that is not the true picture. If you want to know the true picture, call this person, call this person, call this person. You will know the truth. I've discovered that people that bear false witness against people, they convince other people to bear false witness so that they can be secured. And mumulishly. The people they are telling, they don't have head. They will go and put, put their head. Scripture say, a wise man foreseeth evil and hideth. Mumulishly. The cause coming upon the person must also follow you. Hear it. Immediately that thing was done. And they found out the truth. Bishop became angry. You. You. You lie against him. And if they discover you that you are lying against another person. They will never have value for you again. After that time, that pastor was promoted. I won't call his name because if you will know where he is just now. Please don't bear false witness and never you be a party to any person lying against another person. Because the cause will follow you to your house. The cause of false preaching, false pastors giving false prophecy to collect money. The next one is the cause of those who trust a man. <laughs> it's there in Jeremiah 17. Cause is man that put his trust in man 
and make it flesh is what? Trust. He said, he shall not see good when he cometh. No wonder David said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where cometh my help? He said, my help cometh from God. Don't trust any man. Man can change before a second. Man can change. Let God be your constant trust. Man is always variable. Man can change. I tell you, man can change. God warned me, I think I mentioned it before, way back 1993. That morning was a graduation ceremony for our seniors that have graduated. God woke me up. Put not your trust in man of what account is he. I was now wondering, where's the scripture? I had to look for concordance to search out the scripture. <laughs> the trust I had in the, my, my friend's father's connection was too strong. My friend's father was Abiola's chief accountant. So we are already calculating that the moment we finish, we may not even need to work. We just set up our own company and be doing our own thing. But God warned me that day, don't put your trust in any man. Man can change. Things can change. After that day, if pastor change, hmm? Not you know. I just leave him on his own. Never. I won't bear grudges against him. I won't fight him. I won't do him anything. You change, I leave you. Straight. I'm not afraid to say it. When my older, elder sister's husband misbehaved, I left him alone. I left him alone. He came back to beg. Don't put your trust in any man if God must be on your side. The moment you trust man, God will leave you alone. But you know, man is limited. But God is unlimited. The more you trust man, you carry more cause. Man can fail, man can change, man can disappoint. True or false? The cause. The next one is the cause of those who's, who mistreat the weak, the handicapped. Who are the weak? Some people mistreat their house boys and their house girls. Who are the handicapped? The people that can't fight back. Don't undo anybody because you have what it takes to undo them. No, leave them alone. What did I say? Leave them alone. I remember the story of a, a man that was sleeping with a house girl. He will do it so that she cannot talk, but she was cursing the man. Do you know what she was cursing the man? As you are doing it to me, people will do it to your children. And I tell you the truth, they did it to all his daughters. Put pressure on her if you don't, if you, if you talk, I will kill you. If you open your mouth one day and talk, I will kill you. So she kept quiet was doing it free of charge. And as she was doing it, the girl was cursing him. As you are doing it to me, God will do it to your children. God will, God will do it to your children. And that was her one by one. <laughs> God fights for the weak, oh. God fights for the weak. Be careful. Don't take undue advantage of anybody. You are privileged now. The person may be privileged tomorrow. Yeah. 
The next one, the cause of those who neglect the weak. <laughs> Don't neglect the weak. If it's in your power to raise them, raise them. If it's in your power to help them, help them. They may be challenged today. You will be challenged tomorrow. Be careful. So that you don't enter a course. That's why when I, when I see it, I can help you. I will help you. Even though you are misbehaving or you are doing me bad, I will, I will help you. It's God that will answer for me, not, not you. You know, some of the people you are helping, they are the ones that Satan used to fight you. That does not mean that you should stop helping people. Are you hearing what I'm saying, huh? The next one is the cause of wickedness. Proverbs 3 verse 33. Any wicked act you show brings you under a cause. The cause of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But he blessed the habitation of the just. The cause of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. So one man's wickedness can bring to the entire family a cause. Who is the wicked? The man or the woman that takes delight in doing people evil, causing people pain, causing people harm, causing people sorrow. He says the cause of the Lord is in his what? House. So instead of blessing following the person to his house, it is causes that follows the person to the house. The next one is the cause of those who don't listen to their prophets. But rather they cause their prophet. Jeremiah 29. I think I've talked about this. Let's just read the scripture. Jeremiah 29 verse 15. Because you have said the Lord had raised us a, a prophet in Babylon. The next verse. Know that thou sayest the Lord of the king that seated upon the throne of David and of all the people that dwelleth in this city and of you brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send upon thee the sword, the famine and the pestilence and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so, they are so evil. Verse 18, and I will persecute them with sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a cause, an astonish, an hissing, and a reproach among all the nations, whither I have driven them. Verse 19 now, because they have not hearkened to my word, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servant the prophet rising, rising up early and sending them but he will not hear say it the Lord are you seeing it now you know some instructions are mocked are you the first pastor we are seeing we don't see pastor for this church oh. <laughs> it's better to keep quiet than to carry something The cause of those who don't help the work of the Lord. If you are a despiser of the work of the Lord, you are under a cause. You better run away. Go and carry a shine. They despise the work of the Lord. They believe to it. They are not interested. Now we are doing our operation wonder double. Never. You will never see them. Who are you? God... God has given them one big office they are occupying. You will soon come down from that office. And you will be regular in prayer meetings. It's true now. Me, I know them now. 
when they are regular in prayer meetings, know that there is something they are looking for. The moment they get it, they will shift camp again. The next one is the cause of crookedness. Who is a crooked man? He's not straight. You try to catch him here, he will corner this way. Crooked. God said, I will catch the crafty in their craftiness. I will show the crooked man that I am also shrewd. Crookedness is a cause. A crooked man is never straight. He will tell this person one thing. He will tell this person another thing. He will tell this person another thing. He's a crooked man. And you can never catch him. You can never catch him. But there is one that has tied him. Because he's tied crooked people. The cause on those who commit adultery, adultery, fornication, all of them are the same. Some people are in church doing it. I say, after all, I mean, I know, I know, others are not, do, others not doing it. Now, if others do it, is your name others? No, if others are doing it, is it legal or approved by God? Should be somebody has did his own. Why didn't Dickens Ball talk? Why didn't marriage committee talk? Marriage committee cannot judge you the way God will judge you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Some people will be in church have been eyeing people, some people's husband. In church. You are under a curse. A demonic spirit is following you. Some they are in relationship and they are already living like There was one that happened, just suddenly pregnant again. He said, go and remove it. He said, I'm not removing it. My hand no deal. He denied the girl. He didn't marry her again. Now there the matter end. There's one that happened in Benin. He pregnated the girl, denied the girl, and left her alone. He said, the guest should have bought it. The guest said, no way. See, if you mention my name, now you, nobody else. This guest suffered, carried the pain, the shame, lost the boy up to six years. So God helped her. Before I was to be transferred from Benin, she came and she said, Pastor, if there is anything God must answer from you concerning me, I need a job. I prayed for her. She got a job in Zeni Bank. She got the job. She started. They started paying her. Now changed the boy's school. The boy was now going to a good school. This mumu came back. Why are you laughing now? The mumu came back. She now called me. That uh, sir, he has come back. What should I do? I say you are idiots. I say, did you hear me? Where? I say you are what? Idiot. He says, sir, he has come to beg. I said. Mama hand no day. Go and do whatever you want to do. 
do you know that that fool I don't know how he managed to get my number he called me he started apologizing he started apologizing I said if I see you <laughs> you know what I will do to him now <laughs> I will flog him physically <laughs> I say, if I see you, something in my office will go touch you. <laughs> so he started sending me texts, asking for forgiveness. I, Satan has been in this game for more than 2,000 years. So I said, asking for forgiveness. This is that. I say, only God know how many girls you have useless. Now, you just heard she's working in Zenny Bank and they are paying her 175 So you want to... So what are you doing? He said, I have one small place I'm managing. I said, go and be managing there. <laughs> so I told the girl, don't ask him. Take care of your child first. Home. At a point, I just got tired because I just found out that the girl too was here. I said, I better go jam yourself. <laughs> go and jam yourself. They got married, though. <laughs> Never see anything. <laughs> uh, praise God. The last one is the cause of leaders who make their people to suffer hunger. I didn't call anybody's name. Though. Did I call anybody's name now? It's in the Bible now. Proverbs 11 verse 26 and Proverbs 28 verse 27. Can you how can you how see now that uh, you don't need winch to be under a curse? You can just use your hand enter the thing. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall do what? But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. Look at 28 verse. Uh, he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. But he that hideth his eyes shall have what? Many what? No, he didn't say many cause. He said many a cause. That's what we call multiplied arrows of causes. Look at this. Obedience. Gateway to realms of noiseless breakthrough. Disobedience. Gateways to realms of noiseless breakdown. Now we have seen the causes. How can we break away from them? Number one, you must be born again. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become what? New. Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He has redeemed us. He has taken us back from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The next verse now, verse 14. That the blessings of Abraham may come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. So you must believe that the blood that Jesus shed on redemption is to bring you out from the curse. Is to bring you out from the curse. Never to go in back into it again. The next thing that is needed is to engage in the prayer of faith. You engage. <laughs> Causes bring sufferings. Causes bring torture. Jesus, you have redeemed me. I am not born again to suffer again. My story must change. Let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us. So every time we come before God in prayer, mercy is prevailing for us. 
You must believe the mercy of God that is triggered by the blood of Jesus so that no cause will hang on your head. Are you following me? Number three, you must engage the blood. The blood. The speaking blood. The blood that speaketh better things. You must constantly engage the blood. The blood speaketh better things. The blood speaketh better things. Whatever I used to experience by the blood, I will not suffer it again. You engage the blood. The blood has a voice. It speaketh better things. The blood is our stronghold. Zechariah chapter 9, is it verse 11 or verse 12? Verse 11. Let's read it very quickly. We are rounding up now. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have set forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Look at the next verse. Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope, even today. Say with me today. Do I declare I will render double unto thee. So as you engage the blood, you are coming out of every prison. Causes locks people inside prison. Causes limits life. Causes places embargo upon you. But as you engage the blood, as your stronghold, you are going home free. I say you are going home free. Scripture said again, through faith in the blood. You hear me? You must have faith in the blood. Faith in the blood. You must have faith in the blood. If you don't have faith in the blood, you are not free. Number five, you must walk in wisdom. A wise man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. You must walk in wisdom. Don't walk in foolishness. We have looked at all the causes of the law. Cheating, lying, bearing false witness. You see it? Somebody just tell you something. Can we confirm? Can we ask the person? No, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Keep it to yourself. I'm just telling you. Keep it to yourself. You claim under a curse because you are not wise, foolish. Anything you, the person is telling you not to confirm, discard it. I said it two weeks ago. If you hear anything about me, please freely come. Come. Somebody said he wanted to go and report me to Papa. I gave him Pastor James' number. Papa saw the things the person sent. He said, when the person come, bring him. And as you are bringing him, tell Tony to be on flight. You can't speak evil against me, I do. Now, face to face. We go judge our matter face to face. Wisdom. No, be me go put for this evil. They brought a matter one time that Papa should sign so that TB Joshua will not be featured on TBN. They brought that uh, all the PFN people have signed that he should just sign. That even Adegbo have signed. Say, you devil. Is my name Adegbo? He didn't call me to tell me. Get out of my office. He said, if God called him, I don't have power to judge him. Till today, they couldn't present that letter. When people want to fight others, they seek your consent. And because you are a mumu, you go and put your head. Over what you know not, the cause that is coming on the person must come upon you too. A wise man foreseeth evil and hideth his head. A foolish man will go and put his head. Please, you need wisdom. Anything you don't know, may it never know you. If someone brings anything that will put you into trouble, ask the person, can we confirm? Can we ask? The next one, restoration of father and the son. If you have offended your father or your mother, go and ask for forgiveness. Go and ask for forgiveness so that it can be well with you. 
go and ask for forgiveness so that he can be well with you. If you try to pretend and say that I have confessed, <laughs> man need to hear. God need to hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. Please go back. Go back. Ask for forgiveness. He will forgive you. Don't die in pride. Pride is a killer. The next one you need is the blessing of the prophets. Prophets can speak blessing and wipe away the causes. A curse was placed over Canaan. Canaan was owned by Ezeham or Sham. Good. Noah placed a curse on them now. That curse followed them until Moses came. It was Moses that deleted the curse that was on Canaan. The Canaan that we are saying in the land flowing with milk and honey. A curse was following him. Moses came and reversed it. Reuben was cursed. And he came again and said, let Reuben live and not die. Let not his men be few. Hear me? You need to believe prophetic blessings. If you don't believe prophetic blessings, I want to let you know, evil people, their wish, their utterances will continually be coming to pass in your life. No one that scripture says, believe the Lord thy God and that shall be established. Believe also his prophets, so shall thou prosper. It was this, it was a book I read that gave me better understanding for prophetic connection. That's why my life now is connected to eight generational prophets. So that as they are blessing me, man, I'm entering generational blessings. You can't squeeze my destiny. You can't walk against me and it come to pass. You will die in the process. Why? Whoever bless you is blessed. Whoever causes you, our cause come upon them. It's as dangerous as that. You need prophetic blessings. If not, the heavens will be brass against you. The earth will burn like oven for you. You need it. You need it. You need it. In Genesis 27, <laughs> when Isaac blessed him, he said, I blessed him, and indeed he shall be what? Blessed. Was he blessed or not? The same blessing that came upon Jacob. Esau cried and cried and said, my father, don't you have one more blessing for me? He said, my father, bless me also. Even me too, bless me. The same blessing that came upon Joseph, I mean Jacob, he started raining the same thing upon him. He started raining. Go back and read Genesis 27. We will not read it. You go and read it. He started raining the same blessing. And today, the whole Arab nation now he's all get. We'll talk about that in second service. The power of the blessing. And the lastly, the power of amen. Many of us don't know what is the meaning of amen. When a prophetic blessing is released, and in faith you say, Amen! The meaning is, so be it. So be it. So be as you are saying, Amen. It is hacking onto in the realm of the spirit. Rise up to your feet. We are going to do a very quick one. You don't start. Eh? If you are not born again, the thing is already holding you. But you want to escape the realm of causes to the realm of blessing. Wherever you are, you are in the overflow. Please, you are inside, all eyes closed, all eyes bow. You want to make it right with Jesus and get your name deleted from the book of causes. And get enlisted in the book of blessings. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. 
forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, God bless you. You have taken the first major step. Carry your bag and your Bible and come forward. Pastors, please. Have you poured the oil? Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. You pray that prayer with me before we partake of this anointing. Just come quickly. If you are coming, come right now. Everything that can wait. Give me you. pray that prayer with me. Just come quickly. Put those hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. Oh, Jesus, give me you. Everything that can wait. say this, maybe you don't know. Cause is hide people. You are finished praying the prayer and one demonic voice that doesn't want you to be free say, don't go out. Don't go out. Don't go out. Disgrace the devil now and take your liberty forever. Wherever you are, come quickly right now. I want to pray with you. I will anoint you personally. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. If you are coming, come quickly. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord Jesus. Unto them that come unto you, shall you in no wise cast out. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Every guilt. Every legal hold the enemy had over these lives, let the yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand here, don't go. Give me the oil. Open your hand. You are going to pray with us right now. Open your hand. Open your hand. Your right hand. Your right hand. As this oil come upon you, you are going to pray. Lord, every cause of disobedience, every cause of rebellion, every cause of the law that I've walked into ignorantly, foolishly, carelessly, by the mercy of the blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost, let your fire break the spell over my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray passionately. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace for obedience. Let it rest upon me. Lift up your voice and pray. If you want to pray, pray. If you don't want to pray, you can still keep quiet. Every cause of the Lord that has made my life difficult. That has brought me under pain. Under torture. On that suffering, every form of ignorance, every form of rebellion, every form of carelessness, every form of pride that have opened the door of the course of the law to ravage, to destroy, to torment my life. Lord, by this anointing, let the yoke be destroyed. I plead for the mercy of God. By the anointing, let the yoke be destroyed. By the anointing, let thy yoke be destroyed. By the anointing, let thy yoke be destroyed. By the anointing, let thy yoke be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing, let thy yoke be destroyed. By the anointing, let thy yoke be destroyed. By the anointing, let thy yoke be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing, let thy yoke be destroyed. Lord, have mercy on me from every carelessness, from every foolishness, from every form of pride, from every form of arrogance that have opened the door of the course of the law upon my life. Lord, have mercy on me. Let thy yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let thy yoke be destroyed. Lord, let thy yoke be destroyed. Have mercy on me, Lord. 
by the mercy of the blood of Jesus, let the yoke be destroyed by the anointing. Uproot every yoke, uproot every yoke of causes in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are the yoke destroyer. I count on the mercy of God. Lift up your voice and pray. I count on the mercy of God. Let the yoke be destroyed. 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 Lord, let the yoke be destroyed. I count on your mercy. 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 The mercy of the blood of Jesus. By your mercy, Lord, let the yoke be destroyed. Let the yoke of causes, let the yoke of the cause of the Lord be destroyed. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Let the yoke be destroyed. Lift up your voice and cry out to God. You are going home free. 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 Lord, have mercy on me. Let the yoke be destroyed. 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 The yoke of the cause of the law. Father. I count on the mercy of the blood of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let the yoke be destroyed. Let the yoke be uprooted. Let the yoke be destroyed. Let the yoke be uprooted. Let the yoke be destroyed. Thank you, Father. Put the oil on your head. Put the oil on your head. Let the yoke be destroyed, my Father. Let the yoke be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, let the yoke be destroyed. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Put your right hand on your head as I pray for you. From today, you shall no longer be under the curse of the Lord. I pray for you by the mercy of the blood of Jesus. The embargo over your life is shattered. Whatever force or power that manipulated you into this cause, their spell over your life is broken today. Any form of struggle that you have suffered, because of the effect of these causes, those bands of wickedness, you are loose from them in the name of Jesus. Powers manipulating you to wrongdoing, their siege over your life is broken today. I proclaim you blessed in the name of Jesus. I proclaim you delivered in the name of Jesus. I proclaim you free in the name of Jesus. From today, the gates of blessing will not be shut against you. The gates of hardship will, will, will be shut up permanently. Whatever you are due for, north, south, east, and west, I command your portion delivered in the name of Jesus. Bishop Abiyah prayed for me that day. He said, enter new realms of glory. I duplicate the same upon you. Enter new realms of glory. He said, enter new realms of supply. 
I pray for you, enter new realms of supply. He said, make new waves of progress. I duplicate upon you, make new waves of progress. This year, 2018, you shall not be found on the same spot. You will not be on the same spot. Do your hand like this. I pray for you. These hands will not beg bread. These hands will not carry shame. These hands will not carry defeats. These hands will not lack. From today, your hands prosper in a new dimension. Your hands carry new weights of blessings. What others are struggling to get, you will cheaply achieve. Say amen like a believer. By the four winds of the spirits, I decree, let supply locate you. Anyone tormented by the fear of death, I decree the spell broken in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever is withheld from others, be surrendered to you. Amen. I decree today, the key of wealth drops in your hand. The key for progress drops in your hand. The key to success drops in your hand. The key to lifting drops in your hand. It shall be well with you. Lift up your hand and give glory to this good God. Bless his name and give him all the praise. Bless you be your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Congratulations. Congratulations.